Today, the world's largest coffee chain canceling its vaccine mandate after the Supreme Court rejected President Biden's vaccine requirement for large companies. More big banks reporting earnings. Bank of America and Morgan Stanley both seeing their profits rising, beating estimates. And luxury cars apparently dodging this semiconductor shortage. How? That and much more coming up on NTD Business. Good evening. Great to have you with us. I'm Paul Graney. Starbucks is no longer requiring vaccine or weekly testing for its over 200,000 employees in the United States. It's after the Supreme Court struck down President Biden's vaccine and weekly testing requirement for large businesses. The coffee giant said it will respect and comply with the court's ruling. But it did tell NTD News in a phone call that it's still encouraging all workers at its U.S. locations to get the vaccine. Some other large companies like General Electric have also suspended their vax mandates after the Supreme Court's ruling. And today, major international airlines canceling flights heading to the United States or switching to different planes. It's the latest complication in a dispute over concerns that new 5G mobile phone service could interfere with aircraft technology. This week, mobile carriers agreed to pause 5G rollout near key airports, so it's not clear why the airlines made today's decisions. U.S. officials did say that even with the concession, there could still be some cancellations and delays because of limitations of equipment on certain planes. Apparently, the Boeing 777 is a particular concern. But the FAA has said it will allow planes with accurate, reliable altimeters to operate around high-power 5G. And Wall Street's made indexes fell today. The Dow falling 340 points, about 1%. S&P 500 lost 44 points, about 1%. The Nasdaq dropped 167 points, about 1.2% today. And two major U.S. banks reporting earnings. Bank of America reporting a profit increase of 28%. It's due to higher interest income and investment banking revenue. B of A saw a net increase income of a net income increase of 11% from a year earlier, potential sign of recovering economy maybe. And at Morgan Stanley, profits rose 9% as people with wealth asked for help managing their money. However, stock and bond trading revenue fell 6%. JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs and Citigroup all saw trading revenues fall. And Cartier-owned Richmond and British brand Burberry are the latest luxury brands to also report healthy sales. Strong demand for jewelry and watches in the Americas and Europe helped Richmond's Q3 sales rise by nearly a third, up to $6.4 billion, beating expectations. It's moving towards directly operated stores and online channels to increase sales and boost margins. Burberry also saw sales accelerate in the third quarter, driven by a strong performance in outerwear and leather goods. It says annual profits would beat market expectations and operating profit for the year in April to April would rise by more than a third. And luxury cars are making record sales. That's even as the overall market is still struggling under the chip shortage. So where are they getting the chips from? And today's Evelyn Lee asked an expert for an outlook on 2022. Rolls-Royce, Bentley and Porsche. If you're looking to buy one of those, you're more likely to find one than other mainstream brands right now. Luxury cars are experiencing record sales, while overall car production is still suffering under chip shortages. But Alex partner Stan Hirsch says that's only a fraction of the overall car market. You're talking about in a market that we sold roughly 80 million, a little less than 80 million vehicles last year, only about eight or 10 million would really qualify in the premium segment and the types of brands that you're talking about less than a million vehicles. Bentley said it was hardly affected by the chip shortage that hit the auto industry and Porsche sales were up 11 percent worldwide. Both are owned by the VW group. In that particular case Volkswagen explains it's because of its centralized decision making. The organization prioritized allocation based on profitability. But other than allocation and the volume of chips needed, Hirsch says there is another reason. They they get higher margins, certainly higher pricing from consumers. uh, And so they are able to find chips on the secondary market uh, more easily. 
Experts predict it will remain a bottleneck this year. And Alex Partner says it's not just a shortage of chips. Labor, resin and steel are all affected. According to Hirsch, in the coming year, manufacturers will pre-order parts way ahead of time to deal with the challenges. You know, the result of that is a bit less flexibility uh, in terms of engineering changes, in terms of shifting uh, and, and uh, I guess, responding to changes in consumer demands. Hirsch says although it will take all of this year to get a more normal inventory level, he says 2022 is going to get better. Evelyn Lee, NTD News. In a bid to ease the trucker shortage, a new federal apprenticeship will allow 18-year-olds to drive semi-trucks across state lines. 49 states and Washington, D.C. already give commercial driver's licenses to people under 21, but they can only drive big rigs within their state. The new program will take those young drivers, train them on interstate trucks. The trucks in the program will need to have certain safety features like automatic braking systems, forward-facing cameras, and a top speed of 65 miles per hour. But even with the safety features, safety advocates say it puts inexperienced drivers in control of some of the biggest, heaviest vehicles on the road. It's not just the big rigs that have shortages. It's hard to find enough forklift drivers, too. That's why two logistics companies plan to deploy thousands of forklifts that can be operated remotely. Arc Best and NFI Industries say they'll join a $42 million investment round in startup Phantom Auto, makes remote control forklifts. They can move goods around warehouses and factories by themselves, or drivers could operate them remotely miles away from the job site. The Association for Advanced Automation says investment in automation surged during the pandemic. ArcBest and Phantom say they plan to work together to sell the forklifts. And Congress is hearing two major antitrust bills tomorrow, both of which could have a significant impact on big tech. And the tech industry is already expressing their opposition. Anthony's Fake Quarter has more. On Thursday, the Senate Judiciary Committee will be looking at two antitrust bills to regulate tech giants, and the tech giants are fighting back. The Open App Markets Act, introduced by Senators Richard Blumenthal and Marsha Blackburn, takes direct aim at the market dominance of Google's and Apple's app stores. Another bill, the American Innovation and Choice Online Act, introduced by Senators Amy Klobuchar and Chuck Grassley, aims to protect competition by preventing big tech companies from favoring their own products. An industry group that represents the tech giants, the Computer and Communications Industry Association, started an ad campaign Wednesday called Don't Break What Works. They say the bill could forever ruin our favorite tech products. They ask us to imagine Amazon without prime free shipping and Google without free search and maps. We hear the same tired arguments from the tech giants over and over again. They complain that somehow if we have antitrust protections, that will stifle innovation, that will make it hard to compete, that it it will put American companies at a disadvantage. Albert Kahn is the executive director of the Surveillance Technology Oversight Project. Khan says many people support the bills. Union activists to you know uh, civil rights groups. We see people uh, on the left and the right who are worried about the growth of corporate power and big tech's power. The Computer and Communications Industry Association told NTD the bills are government-mandated regulation that will upend the affected services. They even describe some of the provisions as unpractical. Fay Quarter, NTD News. And the president isn't taking sides in a debate over limiting stock trading by lawmakers. Bills are making their way through Congress, which would block lawmakers from trading individual stocks while on the job. But the president won't say if he supports it. Uh, the president uh, didn't trade individual stocks when he was a senator. Um, that is how he approached things. He also believes that uh, everyone should be held to the highest standard, but he'll let uh, members of the leadership in Congress and members of Congress determine what the rules should be. Critics say lawmakers have an unfair advantage over regular traders because they have access to non-public information like security briefings. They could also potentially move markets in their favor given their position and influence. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's family has one of the most active trading accounts in Congress. Her husband, an investment professional, regularly buys and sells stocks and stock options. 
Pelosi says the lawmakers should be able to trade just like everyone else. Because this is a free market and people, we are a free market economy, they should be able to participate in that. But it seems a growing number of lawmakers are open to the idea of limiting trading. A recent poll found that 76% of voters think lawmakers should be barred from trading stocks while in office. Here's Democratic Congressman Josh Gottheimer from New Jersey. Well, I don't think members of Congress should be directly involved in trading. I think you should have to turn it over, as I have when I got into Congress, to a third party and not be able to give any direction on the buying and selling. Um, I'm also, of course, open to blind trusts, and, and we've got to get those actually executed in a way that is doable. And right now, the way the Congress has proposed them, it's not workable for most members. Using a blind trust would entail lawmakers handing over control of their portfolios to an outside investment manager. A recent bill from freshman senators John Ossoff and Mark Kelly, both Democrats, is pushing for that. We don't know yet if it'll have enough support to pass, though. And apparently there's a tax loophole that some Bitcoin holders are using to save a ton of cash. It helps them shield their winnings from the tax man. Anthony's Phil Zoe explains. There's a buzzword going around cryptocurrency right now called HIFO. It stands for highest in, first out when selling your crypto. Because the IRS has not given us any regulations for it, uh, many tax preparers feel that it is appropriate to use the highest cost basis of your cryptocurrency as opposed to the first cost basis of your cryptocurrency. That means, for example, instead of selling the Bitcoin you first acquired, you sell the Bitcoin you paid the most money for instead. Um, And that is an enormous difference for tax purposes. That's because selling the most expensive Bitcoin can allow you to pay less in capital gains tax. It's only a short-term thing in the long run when you sell uh, all your Bitcoin maybe a year or two down the road. It doesn't matter. Accountant Adam Markowitz says to be on the safe side, he still recommends clients use the FIFO method, which stands for first in, first out. Because that is a, we know, accepted uh, version of dealing with transactions in general with the IRS, whereas HIFO is something that we'll need some more um, guidance on from the IRS. You could sell your most recent one. Uh, You could sell your oldest one, depending on Uh, your personal situation, how much capital gains you have, if it's long-term capital gains or short-term. Phil Zhou, NTD News. And the top maker of machines that make computer chips still doesn't have permission to export its newest machines to China. It's according to its CEO. ASML is the only company in the world that can manufacture the machines used to make the most advanced chips. But under pressure from the United States, the Dutch government still hasn't granted a license to ASML to export the machines to China. There are concerns the machines could be used in military applications. The company's CEO says he doesn't think China can replicate the technology because ASML relies on innovation and parts from non-Chinese suppliers. Experts say it could take a decade before another company could compete with ASML's chip-making technology. And more Chinese real estate developers are facing pretty enormous amounts of debt maturing this year. So can they overcome the problem and will the Chinese Communist Party step in to help? Anthony's Colin Fredrickson reports. Chinese property developers have $117 billion worth of debt maturing this year, according to Refinitiv data. About a third of it is denominated in dollars, and investors want to know if they can make the payments. Obviously, they don't have the ability to pay. Business professor Frank Xie thinks the main reason they'll have trouble paying is because they lack cash due to a decline in sales. China's home sales last month fell 35 percent compared to the same period a year ago, and developers are facing an unprecedented liquidity squeeze from years of government curbs on borrowing. It led to a string of offshore debt defaults and credit rating downgrades. Although these developers are eager to get help from Beijing, Xie thinks there are two reasons blocking the regime from getting involved. I don't think China has enough uh, foreign exchange reserve to pay for these kind of things. Especially, it's not just one company, it's just uh, dozens of companies. Leverage is so high, and the debt is so high, 
and uh, it's just uh, something that uh, unbearable for the central government to shoulder. The second reason is Chinese Communist Party infighting, and it's possible that Xi might not bail out certain developers because they are from clashing factions. It remains to be seen whether China's developers will be able to negotiate with the creditors to extend deadlines or modify contracts. Colin Fredrickson, NTD News. One of the biggest companies in China, ByteDance, the owner of social media app TikTok, just scrapped its investment arm. According to Reuters sources, it's been shrinking the investment team as Beijing turns up the heat on the country's tech giants. Reuters also says the CCP has drafted new guidelines which will force internet giants to get its approval before undertaking new investments. Experts estimate that over the past year, Beijing wiped billions of dollars of value off the Chinese tech sector by clamping down on it. And still to come this evening. The White House making it easier for Americans to get a free at-home test. Where can you get them and how soon? And a family-run firm is helping an island nation after natural disasters left it devastated. That and much more coming up on NTD Business. Secure, the true solution for your digital privacy and security. Secure is a private and secure messaging and email solution hosted in Switzerland using military-grade encryption and Swiss privacy laws, giving you true privacy. Secure is 100% private and does not collect or sell any of your personal data. Secure's Helix technology connects you securely to our Swiss servers without the need of a VPN, guaranteeing privacy and security for all your communications. Secure Messenger doesn't require your phone number or any personal data that hackers target. Chat by Invites allows you to chat privately and securely with anyone outside of your secure network without the need for others to download Secure. Secure Send offers you a private and secure way to email anyone outside of Secure. You won't find this level of privacy or security on any other email or instant messaging application. Visit secure.com. Regain and protect your privacy today. Someone has to find the way to build the Great Dome Completely new, completely original. The 2022 NTD 8th International Chinese Vocal Competition will be held at the Merkin Hall of Kaufman Music Center in New York City. The competition is honored to have specially invited vocalists with the world-renowned Shen Yun Performing Arts to serve on its panel of judges. The gold award is $10,000. The 2022 8th International Chinese Vocal Competition. For more information, please visit vocal.ntdtv.com. Welcome back. The Omicron variant's ability to spread quickly has meant big demand for COVID-19 tests, leading to shortages and frustrations. This week, however, new measures are being put in place, and White House officials say they will make it easier for Americans to get a test. Here's what you need to know. New COVID-19 cases still high, hospitals still struggling, and when it comes to COVID-19 tests, an unprecedented demand. That's why we've had to take additional measures. We have a billion tests that will become available to people that they can order through the website. That website, covidtests.gov, launched Tuesday. Initially, there will be a limit of four tests per household. They're expected to be shipped within 7 to 12 days of being ordered. There are no shipping costs. 
Most Americans with private insurance can also now buy home tests online or in stores. Contact your insurer to find out if they provide direct coverage at the time of purchase or if claims must be submitted. Make sure to keep your receipt in case it's needed. Other things to know, you won't need a doctor's order or prescription to get the free tests. Insurers must pay for up to eight tests per covered person a month. As for any tests bought before January 15th, you won't be able to get reimbursed. If you're on Medicare, COVID-19 testing done in a lab when ordered by a medical professional comes at no charge. Those enrolled in Medicare Advantage plans should check with insurers to see if at-home test costs will be covered. (sighs) Medicaid and the Children's Health Insurance Program cover home tests with no cost sharing, but enrollees should contact their state agencies for specific coverage details. Federal government will also make 400 million high-quality masks available for free to the public as starting next week. White House says they'll be available at community health centers and pharmacies across the country. You can go to your local CVS or Walgreens and pick one up. And rapper Cardi B is helping the victims of the deadly fire that broke out in a New York City apartment building last week. The Bronx native has pledged to pay the funeral costs for the 17 people who were killed. Cardi B says she hopes this can help the families put all their efforts into moving forward and healing. The singer partnered with the Mayor's Fund to advance New York City to make sure the final wishes of the victims were also met. The state of New York also announced it is granting $2 million to a fund for the victims. And a family-owned business in California that's been shipping to Tonga for decades is pitching in to help the island nation. It's in the wake of its deadly volcanic eruption and tsunami. SF Enterprises and Logistics have moved freight to Tonga for 37 years. Their operations manager, Celia Lengi Pahulu, says they're prioritizing water among other critical supplies. We've just been taking a lot of water because we know the water supply is going to be completely gone. There's no municipal water in Tonga. They depend on rainwater. And so I'm sure all the tanks are filled with debris and ash. So if anything, anyone that calls to want to try to help, we just tell them water. That's what we could do right now. The disaster severed an undersea communications cable, cutting much of Tonga off from the rest of the world. Information on the scale of the devastation has mostly come from reconnaissance aircraft. Lengi Pahulu says her shipping company has yet to hear back from family or work colleagues. We all have family there still, you know, and you know our staff is our family too. So it's it definitely hits close to home. I mean, we're all we're all just trying to do it day by day and, and try not to be so sad about the whole situation because without having contact, we really don't know what the direct need is. The ship from Oakland will take four to five weeks. Ships carrying supplies and relief equipment, including water, have left from ports in Australia and New Zealand. New Zealand's Navy says their vessels are expected to arrive on Friday. And the heavy rains that soaked California late last year were welcomed by farmers and urban planners. But they were also appreciated by another group, endangered coho salmon. In today's Andrew Thomas has more. California received more precipitation from October to December than in the previous 12 months, according to the National Weather Service. Well, this has been a really exciting spawning season here. Um, We got a lot of rain all at once, and the fish were able to get up into small tributaries where they normally aren't seen. The abundance of rain and snow arrived in time for the November to January spawning season in the resource-rich Tamales Bay watershed north of San Francisco. Experts say it enabled some fish to reach tributaries of the Lagunitas Creek at least 13 miles inland in Marin County. And some fish have been spotted a mile upstream, from where the San Geronimo Creek had been dammed until little more than a year ago. We've seen fish in places that they haven't been for almost 25 years. And I think that's, that's definitely a, a sign of the winter that we've had so far. It's great rain, long duration storms that have allowed fish to pass through culverts that are also hard to get through and they can get up into those tributaries. The rain could easily be a mere pause in the state's 20-year drought. The lack of water has complicated efforts by officials to keep fish, farms, and growing cities supplied. Because they like these really tiny, small streams, and that's where they're 
survival is the highest. But if they can't get there because of the obstacles that us as humans have put there, then they're not going to survive. Experts say the state needs several wet years in a row to replenish reservoirs. In the meantime, the fish are benefiting from the recent rains. Andrew Thomas, NTD News. That's the latest business updates for today, but you can still catch NTD Evening News with Stephanie Cox. That's at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. For NTD Business, it's all for today. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Did you know YouTube only keeps selective videos on its platform? So if you want to make sure you get the full picture, just subscribe to our newsletter. Go to newsletter.ntd.com and sign up. It's free.